Welcome to the Never Been Promoted podcast, where we're all about helping you cut the tie to all that holds you back. The excuses, the fears, the people, that sense of entitlement. Cut the ties so you can unleash your inner entrepreneur. Your host, Thomas Helfrick, is on a mission to make more entrepreneurs in the world and make them better at entrepreneurship. Welcome back. We have been live all day today on this podcast and YouTube channel, meeting all kinds of interesting people. Today is going to be uh, the next one's going to be Laura Betterly. Uh, and her own words, she said she's been marketing 102 years. Um, I don't believe that's true, but uh, she's uh, <laughs> she, she knows marketing. We're going to talk about AI and impact on your business. Uh, you know, she has incredible experience, yada, yada, marketing, yada, yada, AI, um, Lori, LauraBetterly.com. We're going to meet her, her, some of her stories of, of, I hope she tells a few of them. I'm going to make her tell a few of them, of how she got into marketing and some stuff she used to do um, back in the day. Uh, it, it's going to be fun. Also, uh, you know, she's also an A team member on the, uh, the the Boom America with Kevin Harrington, which was original Shark Tank guy. So this conversation is going to be helpful and someone who's actually got a lot of experience in marketing and how AI has uh, really impacted business today, um, which if, if you don't know what AI means, it means uh, artificial intelligence. So if that, if that's new to you, welcome to 2024. All right. If this is your first time here, uh, thank you for coming. And if you've been here before, thanks for you know, returning. Our mission's clear, help you become a better entrepreneur. We want to make more entrepreneurs in the world. I think we need it specifically. I think the U S needs more of them. Um, and, and I want to do my part to help you unleash your entrepreneur and, you know, cut that tie to all the shit that's holding you back, right? The, excuses you make, the sense of entitlement you might feel, the fears of whatever you have or, you know, or people even like you got to let a lot of stuff go. You got to cut it off. You got to get to the point where you become exactly who you wanted to become an entrepreneur. And that's what we're here to do. So, uh, you know, go to neverbeenpromoted.com. Check it out. Uh, if you if you, uh, you know, want to do the subscribe at youtube.com at neverbeenpromoted, that would be awesome as well. Hit the notifications because we go live quite a bit and we got a bunch of other fun content coming up. But enough shameless promotion. Let's go ahead and bring in um, Miss Laura to the uh, stage here. Um, how are you, Laura? I'm good. How about you? I'm delicious. Thank you for asking. Well, there you go. There you go. You know, if you sit in the studio enough, I wouldn't want to be in the studio with me right now because it gets warm in here. And then by the end of the day, let's just leave it at that. So um, You already lost half your, your time and whatnot. You keep that up. <laughs> I did. I did. I, in, in occasion, I have to trim it. Yeah, I just see that. Great, I see my, that. And it just gets shorter, gets shorter every month. I actually, I like your mission. I like your mission a lot because, um, you know, I think leveling the paying field, I think that one of the things that's great about being, you know, in this country is the fact that we can, you know, you can start out with whatever you're starting out with and end up with your own business and, uh, you know, yeah. make mistakes. I mean, we've all, you know, I'm, uh, you ask anybody who's successful, they'll tell you about the 32 times that they were unsuccessful. Um, but everybody remembers the successful one. But yeah, you know, it's 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 good. And I think it's a great mission. It, thank you. And and, and I, I it, if you ever go gambling, you only hear about people when they win. You never hear about them like, oh, I dropped 10K this weekend. Yeah. That one never is talked about. And, and, and entrepreneurship is, is some of a gamble. Uh, though I don't think the ho- odds are stacked against you like a house would be in gambling. It's more of um, uh, you can control the outcomes a bit more. And in if you do, the key is right in entrepreneurship, if you're not learning from what's been presented, you've interacted with, you're you're not going to make it because you're just going to repeat mistakes. You're going to make excuses. You're going to blame others. You're going to find every reason why you weren't as successful as opposed to just ah oh, that's interesting and moving forward and like let's avoid that next time or oh well that really worked understand why and repeat. And if you're not learning, you, you don't get better. And, you know, you're, you're like, you will get into your background here in a second, but you started off in one type of marketing, you moved into AI marketing, and now you have some consulting on it. it. You're evolving with the times to take your past knowledge and say, Hey, this is actually more impactful for a business. And, and here's why I'm, I fit in. So do it, take a minute, uh, you know, set up what, what your, you know, your companies are, what they do. Uh, and, and, you know, then give me kind of a, a, a Start with the overview history. We'll dive into some of your Well, stories. okay. Uh, you know, I always call myself a dinosaur in internet terms just because I've been around for a long time. My first business, um, internet business, or at least marketing, was a company called PC DJ in the late 90s. We were the first dual MP3 player for DJs. 
which was incredibly cool. It was during the dot-com days, so there was a lot of money flowing. And uh, we were traveling the world with rock stars, which, you know, pinched myself. I can't believe that I was back, you know, backstage at uh, Madison Square Garden and got to hang out with some some big, beautiful um, uh, artists and whatnot. So, and that was great. But, um, you know, as time went on, you know, first of all, the dot-com crash did happen. And uh, secondly, uh, it, I was, I'm not corporate and I, and I realized that. So I went out on my own and what I realized was the thing that made the most money at PC DJ as cool as the celebrities was and as cool as uh, uh, the software was, was actually uh, selling advertising in the uh, newsletter. So I ended up selling, you know, that realizing that if I could, uh, Put together a good email list with who I knew in dot com, the dot com world, I would be able to do pretty well. So I uh, leveraged two people I knew with very large lists and I created a new list, which was one of the largest in the country and somehow figured out how to mail and was doing pretty well with that. And I was getting shut down. Now, this was before there were any laws that prohibited um mailing or whatnot, but internet service providers weren't happy. So I wanted to tell the press a story about a single mom who was uh, not being unethical about it, but, you know, was getting shut down for doing an ethical job of mailing. That's not exactly how it turned out, but uh, it was a front page of the Wall Street Journal. Uh, I showed them how things worked. And right before the article was published, the um, uh, a reporter said to me something like, you know, my, my editor wanted to know, hey, you know, so, some people say all, all, all commercial email is spam. How do you respond? And so me being me, I made a joke. I said, well, if that's the case, call me the spam queen. <laughs> and they did. And they did. And 30 column inches and a picture. But, you know, I ended up being on CNN and CNN FN and NPR and tech TV and spoke in front of the Federal Trade Commission and you know, it, it wasn't bad, you know, <laughs> it, was a, it was a great experience and, and I learned a lot from it. You know, yes, I did get some, uh, uh, some hate, which is okay. I mean, I guess I think that's a sign of success to some degree, yeah. um, but I was able to leverage that into not only, you know, a company that I took public and then left, but also, information products, which I've sold. I've had probably 30 to 35,000 students that I taught local, local marketing to and Facebook marketing to and, um, and, and, and now AI. I mean, and that's the thing is, is you've got to look at trends. You've got to look at what's coming up and what's going to create the most impact. Uh, you stay static and you'll, and you'll die. And that's in any business. You know, I mean, if you were doing, um, uh, uh postcards only and you didn't go online you'd be out of business um now it doesn't mean that postcards don't work in fact direct marketing in some cases work better than it used to because people have forgotten about it so now oh when you do you write a handwritten note to somebody now oh my god it's yeah. super effective yeah you've got a long form sales letter now that's you know four or five pages long not only are they interesting to read and usually great stories but they they, they definitely do better now than they used to and depending on where you're advertising, your costs could actually be equal or less than what you actually pay online, uh, depending on what you're using. Because um, Google has just become shopping. Let's be real, okay? You know, I've used, people used to spend time on SEO. And, um, and I just said, you know, I'm not putting any more effort in SEO because I believe that AI is going to be the answer engine and Google is going to be the um, – the, the shopping engine. And interestingly enough, this morning, OpenAI just released a beta. It's called Search GPT. So um, I, guess, it's, I guess, and it's better because you don't have to go through 30 websites to find something. Now, there's four or five different AIs you could go for, go to, to find different things. And each one had, just like if you had different employees, one smarter in one thing and one smarter in another thing. Absolutely. And and, and so, you know, the focus today, I mean, we could take this a lot of ways, but and AI and the impact on, on any business. And, and if we focus in on, let's say the, let's, let's leave the big guys out of this because they, it's just a different game when you have, sure. but, but when you're like a, like a company making 10 million or less, let's say that's, that's a lot of people. Um, and there's a lot less that are making less than a million a year. 
Sure. But the application I see is very much so applicable on either one of those smaller organizations, individual, just who, who runs it and how deep you go with it. Um, so if we focus on that AI and, and impact, like what's, what are you seeing on some of your customers is like becoming the most impactful AI sequence tool, whatever, for a business? Like what's like bang for buck, you got to be doing this. Well, I, I really think if you want to just be, <coughs> excuse me, really simple, let's just talk about meetings, okay, and phone calls and all these things that we do when we're all getting together. You get four or five people on a Zoom meeting or, um, you know, on a call and whatnot. And I record everything. And I, I actually get transcriptions. I use Otter AI, but that's not the only one. There's a there's a whole bunch of them. There's a new one that's actually physical that will take all the information in. So then you take that information and you feed it, you, you, you get it transcribed with AI. But now you have a running record of who said what. How many times have you had an argument where somebody said, well, I told you to go and blah, blah, blah. I don't think so. And, you know, you can go back to the transcript and you can type in AI, was I told this? And sometimes it'll say, yeah, you were told this. And you'll be like, gee, I was wrong. And other times you can go back and say, it was, it, you might have thought it, but you didn't actually say it. The other mm-hmm. thing, yeah, you can go back, you can make task lists. I mean, like you're taking notes, you forget something. You can make task lists that you can then now use to, uh, decide what you're going to do and whatnot. Um, best thing ever happened. Really, you, really. You, uh, you're, you're right. And I'll give you an example. It was a funny, I mean, it wasn't funny at the time. I was like, anyway, we had a, one of our customers had hired somebody to um, take on their marketing. And this person, and, and I'm a, when I say like, this is probably the worst, most awfully unprofessional person I've ever met in my life. And I've worked for some big companies and this lady had it hands down, like no doubt awful human like fake like in one meeting she's like oh well and then when the the, the guy was there and then it was just one-on-one it was like beat a vendor anyway yeah. i record the conversations because it was such a beratement to me i i at some point i just couldn't answer a question without being interrupted and and i, I went back and asked ai i was like how how what was your assessment <laughs> how the ai came back with because i had a customer saying hey i heard you know you weren't very kind <laughs> i was like excuse me and I sent them the summary and I said, hey, this is the AI summary of the meeting. And the, and the AI was like, Thomas took a heavy beratement of verbal abuse. <laughs> <It's> <laughs> whole, yeah. whole thing. And, and though he was a bit defensive, it was understandable because of the inability yeah. to finish the sentence. <laughs> I was like, oh, my God. I was like, it's not me. And anyway. No, but, there, um, there, there's that, too. But for me, it's like, you know, I. I decided that I wasn't going to go ahead and scale. A lot of a lot of marketing companies, they'll add a lot of personnel and they'll scale really large. I decided I wanted to go boutique um, yeah. and keep the quality very, very high and only work with the companies I wanted to work with. And that's great, except then if I'm working with, let's say, 20 clients, I forget sometimes. So this is this is perfect for me. Because I can now not lose any um, any details, and I got to tell you, it used to be that I would have to work a sixty five or seventy hour week to get everything yeah. done, and I don't anymore. I mean, I've been able to train AI to write my voice. For example, I have this beautiful um, way I make proposals, and I have a way I speak and what I think. So I've taught AI to mm-hmm. talk in my voice. And they knows my format for proposals. So now I'll do my, I'll look at it and I'll say, I want to do this, 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 and this, and blah, 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 blah. And I just write my notes and I'll say, can you make me a proposal? And in four minutes, I've got, you know, eight pages of beautiful proposal written exactly how I would have had to do. That would have taken me maybe two to three days, including the editing and whatnot and agonizing over every, every, uh, um, you know, every crossing, every T and whatnot. And it, and it comes out perfect. Or let's say, did you ever write and put some, put up a web page or a blog post and you just think it's the best thing you ever wrote in your life. And then you have a friend who's a grammar Nazi and emails you and says, Oh, by the way, you have a typo in the first paragraph. I am my, my tie ops are legendary. Yeah. Yeah. But now you can just go in and just say, can you please, you know, edit, this page and give me, you know, grammatical and spelling 
um, you know, edits. Mm-hmm. And it takes out of three minutes and then you never end up with that anymore. I, I, I think what you're describing too is like uh, companies can hire uh, people like yourself, like, right, to take on a function of marketing or whatever it'll be. Sure. And, and as, as long as you're upfront, say, hey, listen, I leverage AI, but a human leads it. So, you know, I'm a, right. I'm a proponent of AI, but as long as it's a human led technology, not one that replaces you for some stuff, automation can replace you. AI should enable you. That's and, exactly correct. Right. And they are different things. And I say this a lot, but, uh, you know, is that if, if you can go to say, listen, I'll scale this with you. That way I keep it. And I love the idea of these, um, these transcripts, you dump into say like just a chat GPT thread and, and you name that thread, like that customer. And you say, here's all the interactions. Now, what are the takeaways? What is still remaining? What's maybe something they're worried about? So you can address these in meetings. So you don't, yeah. so every week you're, you're having more effective meetings by remembering. And sometimes they don't remember, because it's just, you know, it's, right. some customers are top of mind and they you do it and then they don't remember asking for it. And you're like, I just wasted four hours. Right. So you can do summaries of like, hey, this is what's going on. Is this still true? Yeah. This makes you more effective. And they build so much trust when you're like the yeah. one that's keeping shit together for them. Yeah. No, no. It's absolutely um, a great, great thing to have. I'm, I was off putting it first. But then when I realized how much time it actually saved, you know, I'm reading this book. It's, it's uh, Ray Kurzweil, right? He's the futurist. He wrote, yeah, it, he wrote, he wrote the, uh, the age of spiritual machines and um, uh, uh, the singularity is near. Right. Well, he has a new one. It's called the singularity is nearer. Yeah. So it's, the new, it's yeah. almost here. <laughs> yeah. Well, pretty much. I mean, from what he says, it looks like at the end of, you know, this decade, we'll have some, some interesting stuff. And about, from what I'm told, 83% of his uh, predictions have come true. And it's real interesting. And, 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 and what you're looking at is enhancing um, the human experience with AI, meaning wouldn't it be nice if you didn't have to, that you could just download or just know something as opposed right. to that. And I, and I find that more now with, with AI than I used to. Like, you know, I have chat GPT on my phone and I'll, I, and, you know, there'll be just weird things. They'll be like, you know, what happened to blah blah blah? You know these things that used to just occur to you, and you know you you know now now you you can know uh, quickly. I mean, back in the day, and I'm sure you remember this, and I'm sure many people remember this. When I was a kid, and I wanted to know something, I had to use the encyclopedia, which or may ask or may, parent. yeah yeah, which may or may not yeah, but my parents would be like, "Go look it up." Anyway. <laughs> and, they make it up, which is worse. They give you yeah, their yeah, political yeah. view yeah. on it. It's but anyway, like, oh, and, okay. yeah. And if you had, if you had a an encyclopedia that was somewhat up to date, you might get the answer. If that didn't work and you couldn't find it there, then you had to go to the library. So uh, there's an extra level of commitment. You go to the school library or you go to the public library, and at that point, you had to learn the Dewey Decimal System. And then you had to go and find, and you had to find specific books and specific references that way. So to mm-hmm. find something out, you had to really be committed and you had to take, and it was a, it took us, you know, a substantial amount of time to figure something out. And if it was in a book that wasn't well written with a lot of words that weren't understandable, then you're also then piling on the amount of dictionaries you also had to have. So you would have to really be smart and dedicated. Then you you have- and it's amazing. These kids today can just literally, it's the first generation, like our kid, my kids, right? They're right. 14, 12, nine. Right. They don't have to ask their, they, they still ask us and right. I'll be like, um, but you know, I'll look up the, but I'm like, they don't have, they, when they have phones, they can look up their own answers. Now yeah, true. there's some fact checking they'll need to do. Cause sometimes yeah. I'm like, where'd you hear that? Like YouTube. I'm like, that is not. Absolutely yeah, you got that, that, but that's and, and this is the one thing I believe is missing from schools, and I think it is missing in general is critical thought. I think that people should be taught how to think. They should be taught how to like you know, I, I, for a better word, their bullshit barometer should be on, right? If it seems a little like unreal, it probably not it's not true, right? And you can look at things. There's actually. Uh, you know, there's actually ways of looking at something to say, you know, does does the time sequence make sense? You know, <laughs> are the fact, you know what I mean? You know, is is there, are you going to, like, I wouldn't go to my hairdresser for political um, information. I want her to do my hair. But you find very well, I saw, a, you know, 
this guy, this guy on, uh, <laughs> on YouTube said, you know, blah, blah, blah. Well, well who was this guy? What was he was saying? Was his name Kyle Ray's? It's just, <laughs> it's, it's, it's <laughs> Yeah, but you, you, you got my point, right? So, you know, and and also about information being specific, but also you also look at scientific studies. You used to think that scientific studies was the end of it. Okay, it's the science says it. Yeah, who paid for the study if it was paid exactly. for? If it was paid for by Big Pharma, it's it's the point of it is to sell whatever drug it is. Don't get me wrong. There are drugs that save lives, and there and, and 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 I'm very, very, very blessed to be in a world where we can solve some of these problems. But there's also some nefarious guys that are going to try to, you know, give you mind altering stuff so that you could be, you know, a drooling scroller for the rest of your life. And that's I, there is uh, every study is funded by pharma. Just to be clear, every, it doesn't matter what it's for. It's fun. <laughs> Uh, yeah. If you don't believe that, just go review the uh, political uh, debate where neither one would answer the question had anything to do with pharma. They're like, no, no, no. We're just going to talk about golf. Yeah. Well, you know, pharma is anyway. pharma is pretty big. And uh, pretty yeah, big. yeah, there's a there's there's a lot of areas that you don't want to talk yeah. about. But but, yeah. you know, well, but- bring, bring it back to AI and business. So 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 you have this stuff like. This is one of the problems I think a lot of business owners and specifically ones that are maybe your baby boomer, late Gen X, Gen X, my age. It's it's that fact checking of if I use this AI tool, what, you know, the negative stuff, the introduction of creativity or hallucination from AI when it's your business and you've built it and you're like, I don't want any of that shit near my business. How 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 are you recommending when people have well, that as a major objection? Well, first of all, you should read what what is being written. And if it's something that has to do with your business, you should probably know if it's BS or not. I would think that most people would. But that's not the only, you know, ChatGPT is not the only AI. So go to Perplexity AI. Perplexity gives you um, citations. So when it gives you an answer or you give it, you can fact check things in there and it'll give you actually where it came from, you know, what website and what site, you know, whatnot. And that, that gives you a much better ability to see what's true and what's not, you know, you're not going to go ahead and uh, do what those, I think there was a, 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 a bunch of uh, law students or, or you know, lawyers who use chat GPT and, and chat GPT had made up uh, a whole they bunch said of they had cases cited that were made up. Absolutely. Yeah. 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 yeah but if they go to jail or be disbarred, the, the easy, the best for yeah. it. Yeah, but you take that information and you put it into perplexity and you ask for the citations. Well, if there's no citations, then you know it's BS, right? So there's that. I mean, and this is what goes back to what I said is you have to have some critical thought. You have to, you can't just blindly believe anything you're told or anything you see, Um, especially with, um, I mean, look, now I can actually make an AI representation of myself that is reasonably good. And I can have it use my voice, which is reasonably okay. And I can upload a script that's decent. And there will be a video of me that I had absolutely nothing to do with. In fact, my friend Alicia finds that her social media videos that are created by AI actually gets uh, better engagement than the stuff that she actually does live. Because it's very direct and there's no ums and there's no, there's, there's just, it's just very certain and it's done. Yep. There's a... There's a degree of, um, well, let me say this. It depends on what you're doing. So for example, the intent of this is not so much, honestly, engagement and likes and views. I think there'd be more entertaining subjects I could talk about than AI and business and God knows what to do. I, you know, I could go jump and hit my face on a pool, right? If I, that was my goal. But when you're using technology and AI and you're using video or whatever else, I think that's some of the things with business you understand is what's the point? Is it a top of funnel? Is it a trust building? Then you'd probably don't want it over edited. You want your real person out there talking about the things you really know. Because when someone wants to work with you, they're going to, they don't want to see overproduced. They want to see authentic. Right. And right. and I think that's a and key piece that people miss still. And that, that goes back to critical thinking of how am I going to leverage this technology in what way right. to really impact what I'm trying to do? And why would I do it at all? Like why make a video at all? It, it, unless you can say, I'm doing this because I want to meet people to do this, this, and this. Right. Or I want to go build more entrepreneurs in the world, whatever right. it is. Right. Is your thought, how do you take that? But if I have that data, 
right? And I know the, the key things that I want to communicate in a video. And I have my avatar and I, and I go ahead and I write a script that does communicate that and communicates it well. I can do that in an hour as opposed to putting together a whole studio and a, and a, and an editing team and all this other stuff. I could do a week's worth of content in that hour where it could have taken me a whole day. And that in essence is the big thing is, is that you can leverage AI and what you have two commodities in life. I don't care what anybody says you have time and you have money and you can make money, but it's really hard to make time. You can't do and that. AI makes time. I mean, it's what you do with the time too, right? So if, if I'm going to go oh. knock out, play Call of Duty for nine hours with my savings each week for my AI yeah. running my inbox, you're not really getting any more back from that. Um, but if you're doing it to go refine your offers or connect with another 15 people that are relevant to you, good use of time. Yeah. Um, or, or even if you're doing, if you're like me, who's been pretty much an alcohol, uh, not an alcohol, like a workaholic for the last, last 30 that years. That was a Freudian slip, yeah. people. Yeah. Um, <laughs> No, I'm not really a drinker. I mean, you, well, you know. Anyway, but the point of the matter is, is that, you know, now I have a few hours a week to work on things that I, I enjoy, my art and whatnot. Now, do I think that that art's going to actually be an income source for me? No, but I it, it feeds me spiritually and I enjoy it. So, and I and I well, found that I can allow myself to have that because I had more work to do, you know? Well, if, if well, I, I think it does. Be, and let me tell you why. Because if you can find... If, several hours a month, a month to feed your brain the neurons in a creative way. Mm-hmm. There's an overflow in your business of how that'll affect you because you'll have more creativity in your business because you're thinking yeah. in that manner and you'll be more energized because you're like, Hey, this pays for that. And because I have this, I'm happier. And when you, it, so it does make money. And at the very least, sometimes it, it, like when you're trying to lose weight, sometimes that's the wrong metric. It's like, you're trying to lose weight or fat. And, and the example being, you know, I've, I've lost a ton of fat in the last 90 days, but I'm the same damn weight because <laughs> I gained a bunch of muscle. And I was like, man, I'm really focused on the wrong metric here completely. No, that, I, and that's true. I just, you know, my, my only point was, is everything I did was just, you know, either taking care of my family or contributing to more cash into the bank. And I, and I realized that, you know, to a certain degree, it made me unhappy because I wasn't able to experience right. these things that, you know, I enjoy, I mean, I have great friends that I love that I didn't get to see very often. And they'd be like, Hey, let's go to a show or let's do this. And I, I was reticent to do that. And now, I mean, like last month or the month before I went to Mexico into the jungle and ended up dancing with a friend of mine. Now that's ridiculously crazy. It was something you would never think I would do in a million years, but I did. And then I flew into Orlando and then I saw the Rolling Stones that night. So you know, I, I wouldn't have been able to do that if That's I had. I was you know, in the jungle right. dancing and now I went to Rolling Stone. And then you were on a TV show right after that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. So, I mean, it was it was great. But I don't think I could have been able to um, get that all done if I didn't have AI. And, and here's the thing. AI as an assistant, it's, a, it's like the smartest assistant you ever had. Oh, it, it's I, I, I just drove to St. Louis for a 30 year high school reunion. And my wife drove half. Or, well, let's be honest. She drove more than half. And I, she's like, what are you doing? I was like, I'm having a conversation with my smartest employee. And it was, I did three hours on AI with GPT to go through a new offer, new service line. And I just, I interacted with it and got it. It, it was amazing how much work I got done in three and a half one hour window yeah. with it. Well, yeah. You train it, you train it, you train you it. Train like- it. And, and, and it was like, okay, now, and then it, it started doing the other things. Now, Hey, go form this email to send this, go get this web. And when you use it in a way that you're using your brain first and you're challenging the things it presents back, it is incredibly effective as an assistant. Um, as yeah. Well. And you can say, look, yeah, that was not what I was looking for. I want Absolutely. more. You won't be offended. You don't have to say please. No, no but, but I do because I've seen the Terminator films. And so I'm very, I have to, and, and it's kind of, yeah. Let, gonna, me, let, me, let me pivot the conversation a bit. So, how much though, take technology out. How important do you think, do you think things like you discuss friends and, you know, your family, take, but how much like, like things like faith, how does that factor into your, your approach maybe with uh, AI and, and just how you're approaching your business? Does, does it, ha- does it, does it impact it? Does it change it? Does it make it stronger? I mean, how, how do you resolve bigger life things with where you well, are? Well, I career? mean, look, I have my faith and I have my friends and I have my family and I, and I have where I go for those answers and everybody has their, 
personal place for that. And I think that's really, really important because I believe mm-hmm. spirituality in general is, you know, I mean, we're spiritual beings. So you can say whatever you want about it, but it's, it, you know, if you close your eyes and make a picture of a cat and you're looking at that cat, you're the one who made the picture of the cat. It wasn't some, some, wasn't some outside stimulus. You made that, right? So that's you. And, and, and that's important. And you can, you can take that gift and do something very positive with it, or you can take that gift and waste it. And um, I think I spent my first 25 years wasting it, to be honest with you. And I'm not doing that anymore. You know, I mean, I, 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 uh, I remember when I had my first child and my friends back then were very, very worried that I was breeding. You know, they're like, I don't know about this. But, you know, my a great wife, friend. Like, mm, yeah, I know, I know. I mean, my best friend still my best friend this many years later. And he, he was like, yeah, we weren't so sure about that when you said you were having your baby, you know. We're like, oh, uh, we're going to have to put up some fences. And uh, oh, well, I'll give you a good example. I ran into my girlfriends from high school when we went to New York. I hadn't seen them in 30 plus years. And uh, we were having a great time. We went to the, you know, uh, city winery and we're right on the, right on the water and it was beautiful. And my girlfriend, Patty looks at me and she goes, do you remember that party at the candy factory? And I was like, no, not really. You know, give me, you know, give, give, give me a hint. She goes, you mean, you don't remember going up and down the conveyor belt? And I was like, oh, yeah, I do remember that. <laughs> so, yeah, I mean, I went from that to where I am now. I mean, many years later. And, and it's also also shows that, you know, people do grow up. They do change. And, you know, they do. Yeah. You uh, in, in the way I, way I tie that in AI and in, in with businesses, even if all this technology is present, you still have to keep this human element of yourself, oh, this yeah. idea that you might, you know, faith aside, put religion out of it, just that there may be bigger things at work. I mean, there's things that are bigger than the sun relative to us, right? So like, That's you know, right. the sun is smaller to other objects in the universe relative that we are personally to the sun, not our planet, us. And so your, your perspective of who you are should be completely just like, be happy you're on the, you're existing period. And, um, and in the idea that you keep a human element as these technologies unfold, keep the critical thinking in place. Yeah. And I think the impact of the technology on your business and the time you get, you're given on this earth will be higher. Yeah. If, you, if you're completely relying on it, you're, it's going to fail you because you failed yourself for allowing it to be yeah. that way. And I think if you keep a human piece, you, you succeed. And, and I, I have a number of stories. I maybe, maybe you have one as well of where you've seen that play out. Um, but I, I think that's the advice I'd give anyone is like, you have yeah. to keep it well, in element at first. Well, yeah. And I, and I think that if you're, if you're the one running AI, right. In your business, then it's going to be a reflection of you, of what you want it to be by the way you trained it. You know, I've heard, I've heard so many times like, well, you know, everything is so, it sounds like it's written by a robot. Yeah. It's written by a robot. Unless you teach that robot what you want it to say or how to say it. And uh, once or twice I've written a story where I've just come up with the outline and I've, I've also trained the AI. I've, I uploaded um, hours of meetings that I was in. And then I said, hey, how would you describe my method of communicating in a couple of paragraphs so that I can use it? to train, you know, to, to have, and, and, and I was, it was kind of, it was kind of um, introverting and interesting at the same time, because, you know, it t- told me how I was very, very direct and whatnot. And, and I, and I kind of knew I was direct, but I really got how direct I was by reading the, the, the assessment that AI made of, of, of my personality, but now I can have it write things, you know, with my sense of humor and my personality and I've had been like, wow, that was really well written. And I, all I could say is thank you. You know what I mean? I wasn't going <coughs> to get into it, but yeah. It's, 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 I think it's, it's important. Um, I actually, I love this technology to, to do reflection on the personality of your business. So if, if you're honest into an AI about your business and who you are and the problems you're having, 
it will give you incredible perspective on potential problems you face and how to maybe solve those. And it, it's a it's a non judgy objective assessment of given the data you give it. So the more honest you are with it, it will look at billions of tra- data points, if not more, yeah. and give you a really a perspective back. So I, I think some people don't use it for that. But it, instead of asking a friend who will probably lie to you or a, maybe a partner or spouse that will really tailor it to the things that annoy them the most, you can ask it just, hey, this is who I am. This is truly what I believe. These are the employees I have. This is what I hate about them. This is what I love about them. Anyway, It'll give you, I mean, that that use of AI in business can help you move your yeah, business. Be great. It'll give you some great suggestions. Fundamentally, you know, yeah. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I fundamentally will always tell AI, act as if you are. You know, I mean, I would tell it what, what, what job title it has, right? You know, you're being a direct response copywriter or you're being uh, a business coach or you're being, you know, uh, a, a parent counselor. I, I even had it. You know, answer some question on that stuff I had going on with the cats. You know, I mean, it's just like, I'd like you to be like, you know, I mean, and it was very upfront, like, you know, you should probably talk to a vet about this, but this data is, and I've had some very, very good answers. And I've also had it help me, like, I had a client that was really being a little pushy and I wanted them to pay me and they were going back and forth and I, I had given them a, a, like a discount if they had paid that week and then they were asking if they could take payments on it. You know, I'm being in New York and my first response is like, no, I gave you the deal. That's a deal. And I was like, well, that's not going to close. It. So I put all that information into um, chat GBT and I told it to be a sales coach. And I put all the, um, the, the, the emails back and forth and what was happening and what, and the results I wanted to get. And I said, can you suggest a few things that I might be able to write that would get me, you know, get, would, would get my result. And I did get paid that day. And I don't believe I would have, if I'd gone with my gut, you know, yeah. I just got a little, you know, a little annoyed. The, uh, I have used, I used uh, GPT specifically. And this is great advice. I think I'm honestly for anybody in any situation, but when you have to write a difficult email and you're emotionally charged in it, I mean, you you want to write, you know, go for yourself and you, but you know, you can't. And you, you take an original email from a customer, or you, maybe somebody, it doesn't matter who it is or what it is. Right. And you give it context and say, I need to communicate these points, you know, acknowledge this, give me advice of how else I can do it and, and just be direct and, you know, whatever it is and, and, right. and kind. The kind of email to write back is so well done professionally. Yeah. And it'll be 10 times better than you could ever do it because it'll take oh. out the emotion and it'll get to the point of, you know, and, and especially if you're saying like, this is why we want to anyway, use that specifically yeah. when you feel yourself charged up, either actually too excited, meaning like, oh my God, I'm gonna get this huge customer or angry as hell. Yeah. And no, it, it definitely, it definitely adds a layer of, of chill that you wouldn't have otherwise. It's, 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 it's great to have. And, um, you know, I mean, there's another point too, which is the only employee that you'll have that'll never come in drunk or hungover, will never be upset because they broke up with their girlfriend, will never say you're overworking me because you're working at midnight. And um, every AI I have doesn't cost me more than $20 a month, which, um, which is amazing. And again, as I said, each one has something different. ChatGPT has got some great uh, things about it. You can create these little programs called GPT so you can upload your own data into it. And it'll, I, I made one to help me learn some musical theory. I made another one that would help me work with one of my, one of my music uh, programs because the, um, uh, the book to uh, how to use a software is 1200 pages. I'm never going to read 1200 pages on that, but I could upload the PDF and just say, I'd like to know how to arm a audio track on blah, blah, blah. And it just pulls it right up. So you can use that. You can use that if you're tre- if you want to teach your kids. Um, let's say you want to teach your kids uh, ma- uh, times tables. You can use a GPT that will, that'll gamify it a bit and help, help a kid on, on, on stuff like that. So there's a lot of like interesting uses that you wouldn't have think, thought of. Uh, remember, do, do you remember the Jetsons? Oh yeah. 
Yeah, so, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. Do, do, do you remember the first the the first video phone call? Remember Jane his wife when she she had to put on the special face. She was she was doing FaceTime in what was that nineteen sixty six or something. It was amazing. Interesting to point out there were no people of color in the future in that show at all. Was, yeah. So somebody missed that one, but anyway. Um, all right, I want Rosie. I want a robot that cleans my house. Hell, they do. It's called a. It doesn't actually clean. Um, it doesn't clean your house. It just it, and and if you have cats, it doesn't really work that well. No, it doesn't. It, my my see? sister has one of dogs in their dog shed. Like, and I'm like, Did you see that video? Like, of the- he only jams up like four times. I'm like, really? I've, I'm seeing how much hair is here. I can feel. It. I can it's tell good. you. I saw a video of one of these little iRobots that rolled off uh, over some dog poop and then just kept all over the whole house. It was. Oh my God. That's, that to me is just funny. Um, it and, is. And, and, it's funny unless it's yours, you know, it's, it's funny because it's not mine. And, and I, yeah. I yeah. Yeah. Talk. If it's yours, it's not so funny, but yeah, I, <laughs> I saw that video and I was like, Oh no. That's awesome. Uh, listen, conscious of time here. And uh, who's an ideal customer for you right now to get a hold of you and how do you want them to do that? Well, I, I, well, I help, I help actually automate businesses. I do, I do marketing programs and I automate businesses. Like, so if you wanted to uh, automate, let's say some of your copywriting functions, I could go in and get your voice and create a, an AI program that would do that. Or if you, let's say you have a lot of customer service stuff, I could take all your earlier uh, uh, tech support tickets and put it into a, a little robot and that would answer most questions that would come up so that you would have less humans having to answer questions for, for people. So there, there's a lot of different stuff. So if you want to automate anything, that would be one thing. If you have a, a, a pro, a, you know, a, a great business, but you need more leads and you don't know what to do with that. Um, I can help with that. So uh, you can get me at laurabetterly.com. Um, I have a newsletter, uh, yada, yada, AI or yada, yada marketing. And uh, I'm on social media. I mean, it's, it's kind of hard to miss me since I've got the pink hair. I noticed that. I mean, mm. it's good. It's a statement. And pink, pink's yeah. uh, the, the lipstick still. It's good. Yeah, I, I just found this pink. I love it. It matches your hair. It's great. It's good to be in brand. Uh, Laura, thank you so much for joining me today. I appreciate it. Oh, thanks for having me. I'm going to put you in the periwinkle room. I'll be right back, but thank you so much. Thank you, uh, Laura for coming on and, and listen, she got great experience. Um, I've, I've gotten to talk to her offline and we, we did the, uh, the boom America show together as uh, with, with the Kevin Harrington. So uh, very funny, lots of knowledge. This doesn't even scratch the surface of what she could do for your business. So definitely reach out to her at yada, yada marketing or yada, yada AI or Laura betterly.com um, guys. Thank you for making it at this point in the show. Uh, th- this is a, uh, you know, we're on this mission to help entrepreneurs get better at entrepreneurship by cutting the tide, all the stuff that's holding you back. Um, it's called never been promoted. Cause I've never been promoted. That doesn't stop you though, from having a great career or having um, this passion for entrepreneurs, which is what we want to do is make more of them in the world until we meet again, get out there and go unleash your entrepreneur. Thanks for watching. Thank you for listening to the Never Been Promoted podcast. If you liked today's show, subscribe at youtube.com forward slash at never been promoted. Until next time, get out there and go unleash your inner entrepreneur. Thanks again to instantlyrelevant.com for producing the show, all the social media, all the content, posts, articles, everything could not do without you instantlyrelevant.com check it out they're awesome once again instantlyrelevant.com